Rocky Mountain Sasquatch. We are in southwest Montana investigating several Bigfoot sighting reports near the Idaho border. This area has a few hundred years of Bigfoot sighting reports and counters. Natives and later early pioneer settlers and trappers had some scary encounters with this elusive forest giant in this region. Indians used to warn travelers and trappers to avoid certain areas because people used to get attacked and sometimes killed by territorial Sasquatch in these areas. Over 100 years ago, the late President Teddy Roosevelt's good friend Bauman lost his trapping partner a day after they shot what was described as a Bigfoot. The next day, his partner was attacked by this massive creature that snapped his neck and stomped on him. The tracks that led up to and away from Bauman's deceased partner were Bigfoot tracks, exactly like the creature they shot outside their lean-to shelter the evening before. There are still many Bigfoot sightings and aggressive encounters in this part of Montana and Idaho. We search these sighting locations often in hopes of spotting and filming the resident Bigfoot. We like to search for aggressive ones because we feel like bolder ones may improve our chances of filming it up close and out in the open. I would like to share with you more recent Bigfoot sightings in the area while we show you around this Bigfoot sighting hotspot. Some bear hunters report seeing a large reddish Sasquatch that the hair looked like it was dreadlocked in the bitter root. Anthony E. writes RMSO. It was 1999 I was riding up the west fork of the bitter root, going up to the lookout. I was on Malloy Creek heading down just before dark, I would say about 25 minutes of light left. I was on the back of the four-wheeler with a friend as we were heading back down the mountain and subject was about seven to eight feet tall with reddish dreadlocks hair. It ran with us alongside the four-wheeler for about 35 yards down the side of the mountain. Both looked at each other and said, that was not a bear. We were running about 25 miles an hour down the mountain, trying to make it down to another area to glass real quick to spot bears before dark. This animal ran into the trees on two legs, and like I said, it was only about 35 to 40 yards away. RMSO asks, how were you able to determine its speed was 25 miles per hour. Anthony responds, It ran alongside us, and we were going at approximately 20 to 25 miles an hour on the four-wheeler. RMSO continues, Appreciate all of the details. We have been on Malloy Creek and have been up to the lookout tower too, searching for Bigfoot that was recently seen crossing near Chief Joseph Trailhead. We spent an evening glassing rivers, roads, creeks, clearings, tree lines, and mountain ridges for a few hours up there. Cool area. Thanks again for your Bigfoot sighting reports. Yes, and just as I said, this area has a ton of Bigfoot sightings on the southwest side of Montana. Some of them are pretty aggressive. That's one of the attractions for us to come in here. I hope you guys enjoyed a look around this Bigfoot sighting area. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. Rocky Mountain Sasquatch. A giant Bigfoot was in the bitter root forest near the Deadly Balm and Bigfoot location. After watching a highlight video that we put out of some Bigfoot tracks that we found in the Balm and Bigfoot location, Robin writes to RMSO, I was hunting high up in the bitter root mountain range on the Idaho side with my father-in-law and had found an area where there was a forested draw where we could see that the elk liked to lay up out of the sun. We figured it could be a nighttime sleeping area. We devised a plan where I would hike up to the ridge overseeing the draw as the sun barely started to show. I would slowly low crawl down the side of the ravine and try to spook the elk to head up the ravine where my father-in-law was waiting. I started low crawling very slowly and silently down the side of this ridge, head first, terrified I might bump into a cougar, which are everywhere up there. The grass was very wet with dew and I was soon soaked as I approached the bottom. I must have made a noise or got winded by the rising air because suddenly I heard a heavy thumping of something running up the draw in front of me that I could tell was not four-legged and it was alone. A minute later I was at the bottom and the sun was brightening and I looked at the ground and didn't see any elk tracks anywhere. I thought maybe a bear but no bear tracks. It was still too dark to really make out anything distant so I waited a bit until I could see. 
As things brightened up, I noticed that something with a long gate had run up the ravine, but the ground was hard from all the elk traffic that had beat the dirt down hard, so I couldn't make out what it was at first. I started tracking up the ravine in the distance about 50 yards. I could see where whatever it was had cut up the hill because the dew was freshly disturbed, and I could make out a dark path of grass. No dew heading up the hill. When I got to the path, it only took me a step or two to see big, huge bipedal footprints with distinct toe outlines digging into the side of the hill and mud coming out around the toes as it raced up the ravine away from me. Putting my size 10 shoe next to it was nearly double my length. When I realized that I had slowly crept up on a Bigfoot, it left me a bit unnerved. I wasn't 40 feet from it when it bolted. RMSO responds, Twice the size of a 10 boot sounds huge. It must have been around 18 inches or longer in length. More than likely, it was an adult Sasquatch. The famous deadly bomb and Bigfoot encounter happened near the Idaho-Montana border of the Bitterroot Mountains, too, along with many more Bigfoot sighting reports in that area. Duke Sullivan also commented that his late friend Kevin Lang, a researcher in the southwest Bitterroots, also talked about how crabby the Sasquatch in that area was. Good area to stay away from, he says. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.